sir, yes. Good morning, Gerald. Quite a relay of secretaries you've got there. It's rather like receiving a call from Hong Kong. Hmm? Yes, I'm well aware that it's Thursday and there is the monthly board meeting this afternoon. Yes, I got your note. I don't know why you bothered. An election pamphlet with a photo and vote for Merle would have done. Oh, yes, yes, I'm aware of that too. Gerald, the day you can count on me will be a nasty shock for both of us. Hmm? Yes, I am enjoying the quiet life. Thank you for asking. Goodbye. But if I'm on the list that that idiot Merle thinks he can lobby, I deserve a drink. Well, he might have brought one for me. Uh, no, he's got the nomination sewed up anyway. Nothing you can do about it. The quiet life. It's beginning to pall a little. Of course, we could take up croquet, use the side lawn, like all those frustrated Victorian reverends. Dish out calf's foot jelly to the peasants when it's cold. No, thank you. Anyway, who's frustrated? Oh, the Victorian reverends, dear. Counts for all those interminable sermons. The heads of agreement are refreshingly simple, Mr. Bly. And we have access to overseas finance. Your civil engineering firm wishes to draw on those resources. So we exchange a substantial block of shares in our overseas banking subsidiary for shares in your organization. Nominate the joint managing director. And look forward to a mutually profitable relationship. And you'll nominate Sir Gerald Merle. Subject to board ratification. Has your father been through this agreement? We damn near dictated it. Yes, yes, he's seen it. Well, gentlemen, if that's all. I think so. I take your point about urgency. Our board meetings this afternoon. Good. We'll be in touch. Well, an extremely valuable meeting. I suppose so. I'd expected to see Caswell Bly himself. He has other interests now. And that worries me. The son's capable enough, but he's not Caswell Bly. I think that's where my contribution will come in. Objective management. That'll make a change for Bly construction. What about John Wilder? What about him? He's an ordinary board member with one vote. And ten of us firmly against him? Wilder's got no power, and he knows it. Yes, hello, is that Scott Furlong? Uh, could I speak to Mr. Henderson, please? Mm. Hmm? Oh, well, tell him it's the acting superintendent of the Nether Mudley Gaslight and Co. Company. Well, I haven't really got a job, have I? Hello, Don. Uh, what about a drink? Uh, the club at five, hmm? Splendid, good, yes. Uh, uh, Don, you do know young Kenneth Bly, don't you? Why don't you give him a ring? Uh, just to say hello. Excellent. All right, bye. Thought you were abnormally broody over lunch. Watching my digestion. Your car's ready, Sir John. Oh, thank you, uh, um... Henrietta. Yeah. None of them stay long enough for me to remember their names. Aren't you carrying things a bit far? Well, I'm the new boy. It's up to me to behave with due humility. Oh, we're turning up to board meetings in patched trousers, Nick. Oh, no. Moderation in all things. Well, I hope Revit and Merv appreciate it. You seem in a very good mood, all of a sudden. Sound of trumpets. No, that's old Mel blowing his nose. <laughs> no. You know, we had a cat once who could get into almost any cage you cared to mention. He'd just study it for a couple of hours and then smirk. Just like you. Then what happened? There's a moral here somewhere. 
Well, we lost an awful lot of canaries, but the cat choked to death on feathers. Better than dying of starvation. Yes, yes, I'm not concerned with that. You just tell the minister that as president of the National Murderways Council, I cannot and will not tolerate the present restrictionist policy. And I shall say so as loud and as often as I can. Goodbye. Under secretaries, they talk as if they've got a mouthful of marbles. What did your striped trouser brigade say? Well, they call the agreement refreshingly simple. And it's staying that way. <laughs> I'm not supporting a battalion of lawyers for two years. What do you think of Sir Gerald Merle? Not very much. You can work with him. I don't think he knows enough. Oh, all the better. The less he knows, the less he can interfere. I, I'm not sure that's a good thing. I am. Look, Father, it was different when you were full-time as chairman, when you were working at it. But not now, not here. Not as president of the NMC. I'm still chairman of Bly Construction. Now, when you want help, you get it. If you can't run the firm on these terms, <laughs> just say so. Run it? Did you say run it? Beautiful country, sir. Even at this time of the year. Hmm? Oh, yes, I suppose it is. A bit too damp for my liking. These new roads are making a mess of it, though. Where the devil's Wilder? You'd think he could be punctual once in a month. Not as if he had much else to do, except his national export board. <laughs> Still, your proposition is admirable, Gerald. Congratulations. Of course, sir. Bly's a bit of an oik, but no matter. Gives us a high profit outlet for overseas France. That's what concerns me. If Gerald can wiggle the transfer through the Treasury, I've had a word in the right ear. No snags there. And good afternoon. You're all very early. We've a good deal to get through. Well, we've been over most of it, John. We've seen a copy of the Bly Agreement. Yes, I've read it. I'm filled with admiration. We're all in favor, too. I didn't mean that. I know I'm the very latest arrival in all senses, but in my opinion, Caswell Bly is not building highways, but committing robbery upon them. Who wrote this agreement? Our lawyers have been over it. That wasn't the question. I propose we put the matter to the vote. Mr. Courtney has proposed. I second. Gentlemen, in favor? Against? That's conclusive enough. The agreement is ratified. I should now like to move on to the nomination from this board of a joint managing director for Bly Construction. My own choice is Sir Gerald Merle. Just the man. Any comment, Wilder? Oh, no, no. If we are going to commit seven million pounds of investors' money to... Uh, overseas contracts building six-lane highways from one clump of mud huts to another with a statue of the founder of the republic thrown in for good measure i can think of no better person than sir gerald Mell to receive the bills i have great pleasure in seconding the nomination formally well, i don't like coming here either i've got work to do but you're never in your own office of blies you know what you said when you took this this president's job. And you were the best contract director Bly Construction ever had. Well, then why is this Merle coming in? Because he's an MP? MPs are two a penny. They can wave their ideals about all they like. In the end, they do what the whips tell them. Well, why then? Look, Mr. Caswell, I've been here 14 years. I started as a site foreman. I know this I business. I know. I took you on. Now you're a director. And then why Merle for the new job? Why not me? Because you can't lay your hands on seven million pounds overseas money. Now, I think he's a rocky Merle and not some operator like John Wilder. Suspicious news people are here, Mr. Bly. Oh, very well, Jane. Show them in. Oh, and you better open the bar, too. Now, uh, don't do anything stupid, Douglas. Think about it. You couldn't live on a site foreman's wages now. Thank you. Uh, it's very nice to see you again, Don. How's the aircraft industry? How's Corbett? 
pottage faced as usual. He's busy learning French. Yeah. Aren't we all? Ça va coûter combien, ma chère? How much is it going to cost, old chap? Thank you, Don. Well, I'll say this. When you pulled out, the timing was marvellous. All good exits are. I want to offer you a job. What? A job. Well, I'm sorry, I must have missed the announcement or something. I, I didn't know you had a job yourself. I haven't. But it's only a matter of time. I'm going into civil engineering. Oh, well, that makes two of us who don't know a thing about it. There was a meeting today at the Foreign Minister's conference to consider the... Just a moment. The latest comment on the government cutback in road building comes from Mr. Caswell Bly, President of the National Motorways Council, interviewed by ITN at the Council's headquarters. The price of British goods in world markets depends on how fast we can move them and how cheaply. I find it deplorable that there should be this pretense of lack of money for building a, an efficient road network. The, uh, the motorist and the contract director pay hundreds of millions of pounds a year into something called a road fund. Now, this road fund is systematically milked by the government for other purposes. Now, I call this legal larceny, and I shall continue to do so. Uh, as long as I'm given here. How would you like to work for Bly Construction? Not him. Oh, sorry, not me. Not while they've still got national assistance. Not him, me. A thousand pounds a year more than you're getting now, and a directorship at the end of the year. Well, it is near Christmas. Hmm. Did you uh, ring young Kenneth Bly? Yes, just uh, hello and goodbye and some bubble. Good. Uh, but what about old Concrete Head himself? Caswell Bly is moving on. He's the president of the National Motorways Council. He's a founder member of the National Export Board. He's got the political itch and he's in a hurry. He wants a new Ministry of Roads, with him as the first minister. Oh. Well, I'll emigrate. I'm not proud. While a 30 million pound civil engineering empire looks like falling to pieces unless we gallop to the rescue. Yes? yes I am still here, thank you. Oh, hello, Don. Uh, what's the news? Good. Now, when? Uh, this afternoon. Look, look, if you're going to be golfing with the young Bly, why don't you use the Brilston Club on my membership and uh, pop over here for tea afterwards? Yes, tea. It's a habit that Pamela has picked up. Oh, that's fine then. Splendid. See you about four. Bye. Worse than Kew Gardens. Oh, Pamela, I've got uh, Don Henderson and a fellow called Kenneth Bly coming over for tea this afternoon. Tell, uh, uh, what's her name? Henrietta. Yeah, that's it. Tell her to put on a clean penny or whatever she does. Yes, dear, I will. Mm. Is it business? Only marginal as yet. Business where I'm supposed to creep off and crouch over my tatting or business where I'm supposed to lounge and look decorative? Oh, lounge, lounge by all means. You can pour. Donald always slips it over into the sources anyway. Thank you. Ah, Bly. Good yes. morning. Gerald Merle. Oh, yes, of course. How are you? Yes, I wanted to talk with you. About your nomination. Yes, yes, it's acceptable. Yes, there are a great many points I'd like to discuss. Well, there's a board meeting later this week. Pure formality. My son will brief you on the details. Well, I'd hope for some preliminary discussion. Well, uh, the agreement is signed, isn't it? The money is available and we've got the contracts to invest it in. What is there to uh, talk about? Well, my own responsibilities as joint managing director should, in my opinion. Good, good. Ah, there you are, Minister. I'll talk to you about it later, Charles. You wanted to see me. I prefer it to be in private. I do have an office. <laughs> this is quicker. I'm not bothered about privacy. Well, what is it this time? Another slap on the wrist? 
What do you expect after your outburst on television? Bly, I've told you repeatedly. We'll give your counsel every help and consideration. But we are entitled to some sense of responsibility in return. Like not shouting about the truth. Oh, I'm not going to hand out a lecture on elementary economics. But you can't solve everything with a shovel. Especially when you use it to shift the facts. Facts are for people who write encyclopedias. <laughs> a typical politician's remark. <laughs> You're becoming quite a politician yourself. Who's running Bly Construction these days? It runs itself. I keep an eye on it. Then let's be blunt about it. Make your mind up about your real interests. More than half the contracts in this country are paid for by government money. Not the governments. The taxpayers. Now you make your mind up about that. Hello, Doc. Just in time. Hello, Mr. Bly. Uh, this is my wife. How do you do? Come on in. Thank you. Well, Don, this is quite like old times. Cryptic telephone calls, you hear strange faces. I don't know whether I ought to batten down the hatches or not. Oh, no need. Can't win this one. Outvoted six to one, and Merle's nomination unanimous. Fiver? Oh, no. Oh, dear me, no, no. Now's the time for all good men to keep a tight clutch on their piggy banks. <laughs> oh, it is good to see you again, Don. Thank you. Well, the main one's the bridge project in South America. You know, World Bank funds, lots of competition. We got the design right, and I think there's a good chance. Will it appear in next year's figures? Well, I doubt it. We got it down as work in progress, but um, the contract's still in the pipeline. It's the name at the bottom we need. That's where my father was a wizard. Was? Well, is. Have you run for tea, John? Uh, no, no, I just shouted. Lovely flowers, family. You grow them? He spends most of her time in the garden. It's rather like being married to Percy Thrower. Mm. <laughs> That's what bothers me a little. The what? Lots of tenders and damn few contracts. You voted against the agreement, didn't you? Yes, as a solo. Who told you? Merle? Yes, yes, he did. Pursuing the Merle honesty policy, his duty as he sees it. Well, he hasn't changed much. Oh, no, that's not fair. Didn't you hear the speech he made in favour of wholesome pop music? Mm. Melody Merle, the member for Tin Pan Alley. <laughs> well, give him credit for trying. He hasn't much time left to make parliamentary history. Oh, which is why he's so set on commerce. What do you think of Merle as joint managing director for Bly? Are you really asking me, or do you want a string of loyal possessive and persuading platitudes. It isn't a fair question, Kenneth. I know. Well, if you have Sir Gerald Merle anywhere near the driving seat, you'll be back to the days of the man in front with the red flag. His one characteristic is caution. My, aren't we being charitable? I remember you saying once he belonged in a taxidermist's window. Ah, let's all have some tea. You're not obliged to have Merle, you know. As I read the agreement, his acceptance by your board must be unanimous. We haven't seen my father run a board meeting. Uh, no sugar, thank you. It needn't get as far as that. Dissent by one individual would be enough. And uh, Revage is on the telephone. Thank you, dear. I've sugared. Couldn't find your non-fat soap. Could I use your telephone? Yes, of course. Yeah, there's one in the hall. I'll show you. Thank you. What if you were offered the job? Well, you're in the road business, Mr. Bly. You know the casualty figures. Hello. Oh? Huh? Young Bly. Yes, put him through, please. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Bly. Yes, all going forward. Yes, most satisfactory. What? I refuse to believe this. I can't believe that you find Sir Gerald Merle's nomination unacceptable. He's one of the most respected members. Does your father know of this? I see. 
Yes, I realize that. As an executive board member of Bly, your veto is sufficient. I would like to say, however, that I think you're being most unwise. Get me Mr. Caswell Bly, please. At once. How was Sir Gordon? A little high-pitched. Well, that's understandable. He asked if my father knew. When I said no, he came down an octave. Well, I then pointed out that one disqualification for Merle was enough. Well, better now than in public, I should have thought. Ten out of ten for tact. They say you were a whiz at top-level contracts. You take this job? No. On the terms at present that your firm and the bank are handing out, I wouldn't touch it with a ten-foot pole. I couldn't reach Mr. Kenneth last night, nor this morning. Well, they assumed he was staying in town, and he's on his way now. Well, it better be. All right, thank you, Jane. Close the door, please. No calls. Where have you been? What the hell do you think you're playing at? I stayed at the club, and I know that Merle's the wrong man for the job. Then you'd better change your mind and be quick about it. No, I've written to Revage. Then you can write to him again. I'm a company officer. The letter's legal and it's final. You wrote the agreement, remember? Who put you up to this? Wilder? It smells like Wilder. Legal, final. No, for once it was my idea. Yes, with Wilder pushing you. No, I offered him the job. And he turned it down. He what? He said he wouldn't touch a job with this firm with a ten-foot pole. <laughs> he won't ever get the chance. Oh, he's a man we need, not Merle. I'll nominate Wilder and I'll accept any terms. All right. You want to play games, you want Wilder. And you're not big enough or old enough to cope with either. Now, get back to your office and do some work. But I'm still running Bly Construction. And don't you forget it. It's most unfortunate, Gerald. There's a lot of money involved. We can't afford delays or disagreements. Well, all the work I've done. The treasury negotiations. All most unfortunate. Yes? Good. Show him in, please. Well, what are you doing here? I asked him to come in, Gerald. Why? As you said earlier, it's his sort of situation. So, good morning to you both. I feel we should demand a formal explanation from the full Bly board. Oh, take your shining armor off, Gerald. If it gets out that a director of this bank has been turned down by another company, we have a lot of worried investors. Money is the only thing that rich people are sensitive about. The agreement's been signed. And share transfers started. Yes, I've just been reading about it. Already? That damn fool Courtney and his, his contacts. And with the record of my negative vote. No, Courtney's just anxious to put his thumb in my eye. That's no crime. Lies must have put forward another name. Yes, one has been suggested. Who? Wilder. Now we're getting at the truth. A Wilder wangle. No, Gerald. The nomination was offered to me by young Bly. I turned it down. What? Go on. Well, I voted against the agreement, if you remember. Yes, I'll concede that. Well, coming from you, that's a most graceful apology. We can't... I'll accept it. We can't afford disagreement. Would you accept the Bly nomination? I wouldn't run a village bingo hall on the terms that you are at present handing out. If I accept, and I say if, I want full control of the money which has been allocated by the bank to Bly's. I'm not going up against Caswell Bly as a redundant office boy. I'll accept advice, but advice only from a bank subcommittee made up of financiers, not a whole board of political organ grinders. You're forgetting yourself, Wilder. Your days of this sort of dictation are over. 
I didn't ask to come here, Revage. And I didn't ask for the job. You know where to find me. We can't accept. It's impossible. We have to accept his terms. Gerald, he knows that. We have to nominate Wilder to save face. He'll never prove acceptable to Caswell Bly. And that's all we can rely on. sense for everybody for it to fall through now. Independent overseas finance on their side, the skill to make a profit on it from ours, mutual need. Oh, well, it's a bit of a shotgun marriage still. Nothing wrong with that. Well, it depends whose finger's on the trigger. John's or your father's. Oh, I prefer it to be mine, but the chances of that are nil. Oh. If he can get what he wants, I'll take Wilder's terms. Which include me. And I don't know a thing about civil engineering. Oh, that's not what we need. That's only half of it. There are more politics in one big contract than the Borgias knew in a lifetime. With usually two courses of action, what's right and what's profitable. Well, that's a bit unexpected from you. I'm well over 21. I sometimes get tired of reminding people about it. Why didn't you use a fire axe? What do you want? Two minutes of your valuable time. Well, I've just heard that Merle isn't getting the joint MD job, but that Wilder might be. You can forget that. Not according to Kenneth. Well, he'll do as I tell him. Oh, it doesn't matter anyway. If I'm not even second choice, I'm wasting my time at Bly's. Oh, there are plenty of other jobs. I'm resigning. After the 14 years you're always on about? Yes. No oh, more fool you. Let's have it in writing. Is that all? What do you expect? A chorus of abide with me? Have you made your choice? Hand over to McKinley, clear your desk and get out. Uncomfortable? No, 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 no. Nothing a couple of hours massage won't cure. Change of perspective is useful. Yes, especially in this Bly setup. I don't pretend to understand it. It's all a question of remembering where Caswell Bly came from. A stonemason's yard with the family name in Gothic gold over the gate. That's what drives him, a sense of dynasty. The family name's still there, but now it controls an organization worth 30 million pounds. Young Bly knows it too. He's the only son. It's like something out of Arnold Bennett. Doesn't make it any the less real. Caswell Bly didn't spend 35 years building up that firm to have it taken over by an anonymous board of directors. He still wants the family name over the gate. It all sounds a bit trouble at mill to me, a bit the feudal. It is, Don, it is. So we'd better get our flat caps on, develop a taste for hot pot suppers and join in. Surely it should be possible to bring in an outsider, or an accountant of some sort, a mutual choice. It would mean electing him to the bank more. Yes, I realize that, but surely that's better than letting Wilder run loose. I'm not really convinced, Gerald, it's too drastic. We can't use appointments to this board as emergency measures. Have you thought of the alternative? Wilder replies, oh yes, best we can hope for is stalemate and reconsideration of an extremely foolish decision by young Kenneth Bly. Revage hopes that you'll change your mind. Come back, all is forgiven. Not at this stage. And if you don't, Revage still knows what side his bank balance is butted on. He'll accept me on my terms. <laughs> Even though I do stick in his crawl. And that's nothing novel. Provided you can convince my father. Is that entirely my problem? Yes, yes, I'm afraid so. Mm, fast and pray. I'm sorry. Anyway, it's an academic problem at the moment. I'm just an innocent bystander being dragged into the arena. Don't rub it in, Wilder. 
I want to oblige, but how do we do it? Thank you for the we. That's all I need. Your father's main concern is keeping Blythe's a family firm. That leaves us with only one card to play. You can resign. Oh, no, my father's never taken an ultimatum in his life. I don't want to resign. I mean, I'd like to keep Bly construction in the family, too. What family? It's a one-man band called Caswell. As for all the say you have in running it, you might as well be called Bloggs or Charlie Chaplin. Easy, John, that's a bit hard. Why pretend otherwise? Anyway, it's not my decision. But resigning? No, I can't. Well, that's all there is to it, then. You'll be left with some compromise candidate. A horn rim cipher. Probably an accountant. And nothing's changed. It's too drastic. Too much of a risk. Isn't everything? Come on, Don. We'd better be off. All right. Well, uh, I'll be in touch, then. Some golf, perhaps. I'm all in favor of the leisurely life. That's a change of tune. Well, it takes the strain off the arteries, it promotes commercial goodwill, and it encourages kindness to animals. Well, if this is the sort of sweetness and light you're dispensing, I may as well ask you now. Ask me what? Well, the Davidsons want us to lunch with them tomorrow. Oh, no, no. Not at any price. You can go on your own. After one glass of sherry from Colonel Davidson, I feel as though I've captured the northwest frontier single-handed. Am I supposed to take this resignation seriously? Quite a few people do take me seriously. Not enough for you to walk in here and ram your nomination for joint managing director down my throat. I'm not doing that. I just want you to listen. Try to find out at least why I think we need John Wilder. Now look, you're not going to get any hearing from me not where John Wilder is concerned. Well, not where anybody's concerned. I have a big office, an impressive title, 15 years' experience, and I do just as I'm told. Left to you, I'll spend the rest of my life nodding my head and jumping when you snap your fingers, and there's nothing I can do about it. Except resign. Oh, resign and be damned. And tell Wilder, I'm not one of the jelly-gutted public school bankers he's used to dealing with. No, it's not all Wilder. This had to come sometime. You're still not listening, are you? I have no intention of listening to ultimatums from you or anyone else. Now, I'll give you one thing, and it's the nearest I ever come to a climbing down in my life. I leave this resignation in there until two o'clock tomorrow afternoon. If you haven't picked it up before then, you're on the dole. me, Sir John Wilder. Telephone, Sir John. Who is it? Uh, Mr. Caswell Bly. He says it's urgent, sir. I'm sure he does. Go back and tell him that I'm engaged on some very important business. Ask him to be good enough to ring back in an hour. Hello, Kenneth. Hello, Don. Thanks for coming. Well, that's one way of passing the afternoon. Oh, given a reasonable excuse, which I have. Hmm. Well, I'll join you. There's bound to be a good excuse for me later on. Yeah? If I know John. Look, Ken, I, I know this is none of my business, and I'm a John Wilder man, but... Well, he can be... Don't bother with warnings. I know all about Wilder. But he's right. I knew what I was up to, and I knew the risk. No, it's too late anyway. 
My father's accepted my resignation. What? What? Just like that? Not quite. I've got until two o'clock tomorrow to crawl back. Well, I'd better phone John. Sounded awfully gloomy. Uh, he's lost his talent for optimism. Corbett does that to people. It's nothing to worry about. Hello, yes. Oh, just one minute, please. Caswell Bly. Mm. Dead on time. Hello, Wilder here. Yes, good afternoon, Mr. Bly. Very well, if you think a meeting would be useful. Uh, but uh, not uh, before two o'clock tomorrow afternoon, yes. I'm uh, having lunch with a Colonel Davidson, a very old and dear friend. Later on, yes, of course, if you like. All right, four o'clock at the National Motorways Council. Fine. Thank you. Bye. Well, I'd better ring your old and dear friend, the Colonel. Tell him to order the curry and have the regimental records ready. Yes. Sir John Wilder to see you, sir. Show him in. Good afternoon. I brought you here, Wilder, to tell you that it didn't work. You can't put the screws on me. Nobody can. I've accepted my son's resignation. The boy's better off. Under your thumb, he'd stay a midget all his life. Not if he does as I tell him. Put the megaphone away, Bly. I'm not one of the terrified mediocrities that you've gathered around you. Is that all? Yes. Just to tell you to your face that you're not getting the job. Everybody is assuming that I want it. <laughs> Don't you? What, your one-man band? Only on my terms. Terms? I wouldn't give you a broken pencil. No, no, you wouldn't. You're too short-sighted. I can see far enough. I built Bly's from a stonemason's yard. Yes, I've been reading the company history. With photographs of you driving the first well-known excavator. That's more real achievement than you can count. But it's in the past. The days are over when a man with a barrow full of cement could make a fortune. You're in a depressed industry, Bly. Every time the government puts in a squeeze, the construction business yelps. Why else do you want overseas money? I'll stop the squeezes too. Why do you think I'm here with this council? A political springboard. Certainly not a commercial one. You sweat your life out here while your competitors gain the benefit. That doesn't make you noble in my sight. It makes you stupid. And your own company goes downhill. <laughs> Try reading its balance sheets. I have done. Particularly the work in hand items. Anybody can show a few million pounds for contracts that they hope to land. Getting the contract signed is another matter. And you think you can do it? A booted-out plane maker? Not with you behaving like a Victorian workhouse master, no. I have power from the bank to administer the money. I want signatory power and full negotiating rights on contracts. Then I can do it. <laughs> you don't want much, do you? Only my job? Not your job. Just your freedom to work. <laughs> And you haven't given me one single reason in the world. But I will do now. 
You're running a 30 million pound organization as if it were a string of almshouses. Hmm. I'll give you reasons. One, the bulk of Bly's profits this year has to come from overseas. And you won't get that overseas trade sitting in some front office of a National Motorways Council. Two, if you don't get that overseas trade, you're broke. That way, you're suspect. And three, if you're suspect, you can say goodbye to your dreams in politics. No Ministry of Roads with you in the top seat. <laughs> but these aren't reasons. And even if they were, I could hire a dozen combatant men to sort them out. Not you. You wouldn't hire anybody. You couldn't scare witless. Still not good enough. Not by a long way. You'll have to do better than that to get in here. All right. We'll use the real reason. Your son. Irrelevant. He's out. Oh, yes. Never darken my doors again. But sooner or later, you'd want him back. And he'd want to come back. You don't have the monopoly of family loyalty. And when he does come back, it won't be to hold down the lackey's job that he's got now. He'll want your job. And he'll get it. Even if it takes him ten years, he'll shift you. Your conniving standards don't apply here. Not with Bly construction. No? Then who vetoed Merle? Your son wants to run this business. And though he doesn't know it yet, he's got to cut somebody's throat to do it. Yours. Or mine. If I'm here. Which would you prefer? You're his father. <laughs> You're taking a lot of risks, aren't you? Up against him and me? Well, let's just say I'm tired of the quiet life. All right. All right, Wilder. It's yours. Well, let's see if you can hang on to it. Get me Sir Gordon Revage. Tell him that we have just appointed Sir John Wilder as joint managing director of Bly Construction. Thank <laughs> you. 